Okay, so we have finished up our refined painting and we have lots of information now. It's really changed our painting, especially where we focus most of our attention, like in the face. So it went from a sketch to this, to this, to this, to this. So each, each step giving kind of more nuance and more refinement so that when we zoom in, we don't see pixels, we see strokes and we see colors layered on top of each other. Just like if we were to zoom in on a watercolor or on an oil paint painting. And there might be some areas that look less finished than others, but we've done what we can within the time. Now to put it all together, we want to clean it up and we want to experiment and we want to come up with different finishing techniques. So one thing that bugs me is this little nick right by the ear. That shouldn't be there. So I got to find what layer that's on. It's on this layer. So I just I'm going to be really aggressive and just cut away with my lasso from these certain areas I don't want. Then I can move that selection down through the layers and I take them out. I can refine the jawline, the shoulder line using these kind of techniques. Erasing them away through different layers. And I don't want to be too quick to flatten things or merge them together. So I am going to do that to get my final. Okay, now I want to play with the collar maybe a little bit. Go back to my primary reference. And then go back to my painting and I'm going to build maybe on this layer at a higher opacity around around 50 and this is just kind of finishing work like just realizing what's missing and I'm not going to zoom in too much because I don't want to get too bogged down I don't want to spend a lot of time but I'm going to add a little bit more of this detail into the fabric she's wearing. Does not need to be as in focus as the face. And I'm doing this underneath my top layer. So I don't do any strokes that uh, overwrite ones that I've already been very careful about above it. And I want to be careful not to draw here or outline things roughly because that's going to flatten all this dimensionality out that I've worked hard to get. But in order to make it look like this kind of arabesque pattern, I want just selective highlights to come through. And not let the color just be too blocky or too uniform can even steal some some colors from other parts of the painting right confidence strokes Okay, now, almost there. Doesn't take a lot to finish off, but you want to pay attention to everything. So if any area just feels like it distracts because it doesn't have that finish, 
and you're really going for finished digital painting, that's what you want to focus on. It's not about bringing extreme detail to everything unless you're going for photorealism. It's just about having it be satisfactory. Sometimes that means knocking something back and simplifying as well. I don't want to overstate some of these highlights on the lips. Always good to revisit your highlights and in the eye. Okay. Now the hair, it's got lots very similar to the um, the top that she's wearing. I just want a lot of variation. Want to be careful not to draw and have like strong outlines sitting on top, but break it up a little bit so it doesn't feel so uniform or so hastily thought about. And there are some big shapes here that haven't been touched at all since the base painting. Which is why it's so important in that base painting to cover up everything. And then you just chalk up what looks weird to the person having character. So why animals are a little bit more forgiving. As a political cartoonist, the hardest thing, or an editorial cartoonist for newspapers, the hardest thing was doing caricatures of female politicians. Because it can very quickly go to looking kind of mean. <laughs> just because we have such narrow standards for female beauty. Whereas men, you can kind of make fun of there, or you can capture their likeness in a variety of ways where it's not considered mean-spirited. And that goes for portraiture too. But you don't want to just make everything look airbrushed and soft and perfect. You still want to be able to experiment a little bit. All right, so I'm going to save it there. I'm going to check it on different backgrounds, see that those values work. Yeah, I think that's pretty, pretty much what I was going for. From the base painting on forward with this painted portrait of Nina Simone. So I'm good with that. But I'm going to show you some other stuff just as kind of a bonus because it is digital art and we can push things further. Once we have something that kind of looks like what we had in mind, we have done the digital painting. But now by nature of being digital, it doesn't need to end there. And that's why I have some of the, the reference that is more experimental. So we're going to look in, and see if we can push it in further ways. But it's kind of made a mess I need to clean up on our forehead. Okay. There we go. So save. I got some bright colors in there. I want to echo those in a few places. All right. So now I'm going to collapse all of these into one group. 
So that's what's making up my digital painting, this group. Then I'm going to duplicate that group. And then I'm going to turn things off. So I'm going to keep the, uh, the white on of the background. I'm going to turn off the base painting. I'm going to zoom in. And now I'm going to play with some of these other aspects. So this aspect, which is big, I'm going to play with the levels of it. Actually, I'm going to do something even more kind of random. I'm going to do image auto tone. And that will shift it, will change it. You do, do that to a few different ones and maybe go to image and then do color balance on another layer and push things maybe towards the reds towards the yellows, towards the greens, the sh shadows towards the cyans, and the blues. I can take that base painting. I'm going to shift the levels lighter. And I can even just shift it. Be a little bit more experimental, like shift everything around a little bit. Use my arrow keys. I can even transform it and warp it. This is all safely done on duplicates, right? But this is the kind of thing you can't do with a regular painting. So that was just a bunch of kind of interesting color alterations and shifts that are now in this group. So that's what I started with. And then this is an experiment with it, right? And then maybe I turn off certain things from it. Ooh. And this is where you can start to get what looks a lot more like contemporary painting. <laughs> And then if I get something interesting like that, what I might do is turn off the background, hold down option and say layer, merge that into a new layer on its own. Okay. And now with that, why don't I take that layer and use it as an overlay? You know, as a soft light. Or if I want to go really weird, you know, as a divide. Or I could just do that for the time being. Hold down Option, say Layer, Merge Visible. Remember to hold down Option. So I get these other components I can play with. And maybe on this one, I go to my Filter. And I go to my filter gallery, like we did for color separation. I play with a halftone pattern. And I make those dot sizes really big and noticeable. And it's using my foreground and background colors here. Make the contrast really strong. Say OK. Right? And then I set that to something like, let's see. Ah, I had it. Divide, I think, would be interesting. There we go. And now when I put my paintings behind it, I'm going to do a uh, another layer merge visible there. And so now... You can see from that kind of experiment, I've got those halftone dots in highlights. So now I can apply that to my painting underneath by using different blending modes, like linear burn, overlay, soft light I think is going to work well, and then I play with the opacity of it. And you see how 